Did you grow up in Canada? Were you alive in the 90s? Did you love YTV? Fuck yeah, you did! Welcome back to the show that gives Canadian 90s nostalgia the respect it deserves. Hey everybody, welcome to You, Me, and YTV. Now we're changing up today. I got Canadian voice legends, the original cast of Sailor Moon. Hey, watch it, meatball head. Huh? Oh, sorry. A 30? Admirable. No! Are you stupid or just incredibly lazy? Huh. How dare you give me that! So here we are today, and I'm here with these magnificent people coming all the way from Toronto to Montreal for you and you. And we're going to talk to them today about the history of Sailor Moon, how it was on YTV, and how it affected a generation. Yeah, baby. Here we go. Just a little bit of a backstory, guys. When I was in grade six and stuff like that, and everyone's wearing their Nike hats, and they're just like, yeah, dude, yeah, you watched wrestling last night? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, man, I watched wrestling. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, you see Sailor Moon last night? My like, <laughs> OK, so Toby, yeah, hey. a magnificent bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Just put that in titling. So, so your voice spread romanticism in, uh, in, in women as they were growing up. They would hear your voice and they would think of Tuxedo Mask and blush. I know this because I went as the fan of the opera in 1996 and everyone's like, oh my God, Tuxedo Mask. And I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. He's not real, you're dreaming. <laughs> well, I mean, Lynn would always call a Tuxedo Mask actually Lance Romance because he's, he's just throwing roses everywhere, right? So. And let's just say it goes right to his head when girls say, you know, you were my first crush. I'm like, hey, wait a second, my first crush. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact that you dropped the voice there. Yeah. It's good. You guys are very giving with that. That's amazing. Okay, so you guys get the job. You get a script. It says Sailor Moon. No. We're, okay, there. We didn't get a script that said Sailor Moon. We didn't get scripts at all. They put us into a room and they started playing the show in front of us and they'd go right to where our first line is and then we'd start speaking like karaoke. We're following the bouncing ball basically like karaoke. And so we never even saw scripts. We had no idea what was happening in the show until it happened in front of us. Did you know it was called Sailor Moon? Mm, a little bit. Okay, were you like, what the hell is a Sailor Moon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I remember getting a call for an audition and went out and uh, read some stuff. I listened to a few things and walked away. About five minutes later, my agent uh, gives me a message like, hey, congratulations, you, 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 you got Sailor Moon. I'm like, that's great, what's Sailor Moon? Like, the thing you just auditioned for is uh, amazing, but seriously, what is it? We had no idea. And so to, to be talking to you 20 some odd years later yeah. about a show that we didn't know what it was going to be and now it's been a huge part of our life. It's been half of my life, which is crazy. Awesome. So that would make you... Four. Okay. <laughs> so after you get invested in the characters and you see kind of what happens, I remember being particularly invested when I was a kid in the uh, storyline where Darian gets uh, corrupted by Pr Queen yep. Beryl. Yep. And, I, and I, was, I remember waiting for that to be resolved. And when it was, you know, they finally remembered each other, then boom, he's bad and it's like, no! It was neat because, you know, doing doing uh, Darien, he's a little bit jerkish, but he certainly wasn't bad. But to get to play a bad guy is really kind of neat, you know? But I liked I liked when he returned back to good. Cause and what, oh. what about you? Were the, was there any storylines that Serena went through where you're just kind of like, Aww. Well, for sure, when all of her friends were dying around her in S, at the like at the end of that, watching that, just sitting there going, no, no, and not knowing what was going to happen, and sitting there like playing it out and watching and going, no, no, and then I'd sit there and they go, uh, Linda, that was your line, and I go, sorry, sorry, but can I just keep watching for just half a second to find out what happens first? <laughs> wow, that's great. I remember watching the season finale of part one, which was. Extremely cut down comparatively to the Japanese version right. because there are some thoughts that they might be dead. But in the Japanese version, there's like, there's Ray. She's dead. She's on the ground. Yeah, there's blood and guts. Yeah. So did you guys see the blood and guts versions or did no. you see the edited versions? No, we saw the edited versions. And it's important to know too that they had to edit a lot of stuff out because of the censorship laws. So if a kid was seen on a bicycle without a helmet on, they had to edit that out. They had to edit any any weapons that they saw, any blood and guts, anything like that, they had to edit out. And that's why they had the Sailor Moon says at the beginning of some of the seasons, because it, it's beginning of some of the shows, because they had to fill up the time with something. So yeah. they put a bunch of stuff together and went, let's do yeah, Sailor Moon says. So much out of it, that's, yeah. yeah. Darian got injured by that scheming lowlife Zoysite, but we all get hurt every day in a lot less unusual ways. Like running too fast. Right, 
Never run a slick wet surface or with sharp objects in your hands. It, it was our, our, our version of knowing is half the battle, you know, it was like our Mr. T little thing there. Yeah. Sailor Moon says. <laughs> okay, and when did when did it, you think the show really started to pick up? Like when you, you know, you're there, you're actors, you're doing a job. When did it become Sailor Moon? Wow. I don't even know. For me personally, uh, it was when we started to see merchandising like in, in mass mass quantities. Because when we first did it, we didn't know anything about it. And then next thing you know, I was on a streetcar in Toronto and there's a little boy with a, a, a tuxedo mask backpack. And I was like, that's my character. Like I didn't know that they were going to do any of those things. And they didn't tell us. So for me, that was kind of my moment of, oh my gosh, this is a real thing. This is beyond like just doing a voice. But then years later, I was asked to go to... Um, it was a uh, uh, convention in San Jose, California. I can't remember the name of the convention, but it was quite large. And uh, my agent said, listen, do you want to go to this convention? I, I didn't know what a convention was. He goes, well, it's kind of like the Star Trek things. Like, oh, I, I'm not, no, I'm not. And he goes, well, actually, they, 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 they want to really take care of you. I'm like, okay, well, then sure, I'll go. I'll try it, whatever. And I get there, and it was like 10,000 people. And when we got there, you couldn't even, they wouldn't let me go in the front door. The, the, the car pulled up, the car service. And then they kept driving. I said, oh, no, no, sir, we're actually supposed to get out here. He goes, oh, I, I know. I've been instructed. They don't have security for you to get out. I'm like, get out of here. And my agent was with me at the time and he goes, you know what? I'm glad I was with you for this because I never would have believed it. He goes, it was serious. We had to go through the kitchen elevator to the penthouse because of how, how incredibly crazy Sailor Moon was at that point. And it's just built throughout the years and now it's, it, it's kind of locked in pop culture now. And now right? there's a second generation that's going, yeah. mm, and the mothers are behind them and their fathers behind them going, yes. And we need some <laughs> Sailor Moon on Netflix, yo, because there's a lot of episodes. A lot of episodes that ones I didn't see because I saw it on YTV, and there's I like, like everything you're saying. A lot of too, a lot of too hot for TV ones, and uh, yeah, with Sailor Moon S, it would be just be wonderful to see that all on Netflix because that generation responds to it, and they also have Crystal, and people who like Crystal, hey, when you hear when you see something new, you go and watch some old. You know, yep. people like researching. They like they like their history. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, we, we feel lucky too because even though there's new generations of what's going on, we're kind of always going to be the originals, and that for us is just a, it was such a gift because we didn't really know what was happening. But now, and now, you know, as years go on, as I realize how incredibly uh, broad the Sailor Moon brand is. It's in, it's yeah. All right. Okay, but just remember, these guys are the originals, and this was from the '90s, right? So. Sailor Moon now is a little bit different. So, with just off the top of my imagination, would you guys mind, in your signature voices, saying, follow me on Instagram, Meatball Head, sure. and you saying, but Marion, my cell phone's dead. Okay. okay. Follow me on Instagram. But Darian, my cell phone's dead. Oh, what's, stupid cell phone. What's a cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching You, Me, and YTV. I'm Ryan Stick. I've been with Toby Proctor, Linda Ballantyne. Dreams come true, everybody, at Montreal Comic Con. Keep watching and look these people up. They're coming to a con near you. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and tell all your friends that 90s nostalgia is still alive on You, Me, and YTV.